We're going to be doing a lot of math with our measured numbers, mostly multiplying and dividing. When we do these mathematical operations, we have to make sure that our answers are expressed with the correct number of significant figures. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to multiply and divide measured numbers and express the answer to the correct number of sig figs. Let's say, for example, that we are calculating the volume of a cube. So we get a ruler out and we measure the three side lengths of our cube and we determine that the cube is one centimeter by one centimeter by two centimeters. And since we've used a ruler to calculate and measure the side lengths of the cube, all of these are measured numbers. And when we multiply all of them together, it's going to give us the volume of the cube. So let's just, let's just start by putting this into a calculator. I mean, not that you should need a calculator to do this kind of math, but we're going to do it on the calculator for a specific reason. So if I enter 1.0 times 1.0 times 2.0, the calculator tells me that the answer is 2. Now, again, I want to emphasize that I do know how to multiply 1 times 1 times 2 in my head, but we're doing this um, just to illustrate what the calculator actually tells us is the answer. So we get an answer of 2. The units are cubic centimeters, centimeters cubed, because we have a centimeter times a centimeter times a centimeter. So centimeters cubed. So that is mathematically correct in terms of coming up with the right number. But what about expressing our answer with the right number of sig figs? So when we're tasked with expressing an answer to the correct number of sig figs, our job is to calculate how many sig figs are in each one of the numbers that we are multiplying or dividing. How many sig figs in each number that is being multiplied or divided? So we have to use our rules for sig figs and count how many sig figs are in each one of these numbers. So remember, with our rules of sig figs, we say reading the number from left to right, the first non-zero digit is significant. And then what happens next depends on whether or not we can see a decimal point. In this number, we can see a decimal point. When we can see a decimal point, Every digit to the left of that first non-zero digit is also significant. So 1.0 centimeters has a total of two sig figs. The one and the zero are both significant. It's going to be the same for our other 1.0 centimeters. What about our last measured number, 2.0? Again, the first non-zero digit is significant. And because we have a decimal point, everything after that is also significant. So this number also has two sig figs. So once we have determined how many sig figs we have in each one of the numbers that we are working with, we are then going to figure out out of, out of all of these, which one has the least number of sig figs. So which has the fewest sig figs? Well, in this case, it's a tie. They all have exactly two sig figs. But if they didn't have the same number, we would figure out which one has the least. And that number of sig figs, that number of sig figs, the least number, is how many sig figs that we can express in our answer. And it has to be exactly that amount. So in this case, again, we have a tie, two sig figs, two sig figs, and two sig figs. So the smallest amount is two. So our answer needs to be expressed also to two sig figs. The way the calculator gave us the answer, it just gave us the number two, which is only one significant figure, just that one single digit. We need to rewrite this number to give it two significant figures. We obviously, we can't change its value. The value has to be two, but we need to do something to this number 
not to change its value, but to express the second significant figure. Whenever we need to add significant figures to a number, we can simply put a decimal point on there and throw some zeros on the end. And now our answer has two sig figs. So the answer is 2.0. So again, the reason that I used the calculator to do this is not because I can't figure out how to do this math in my head, but because I wanted to show you that you can't always trust your calculator to give you the answer with the correct number of significant figures. In fact, you can never trust your calculator to do that because calculators are not programmed to do math in that way. So you will always have to do this yourself in your head. Let's do one more example. Let's say that we have 1.00 kilograms and we are multiplying that by six people. Maybe uh, we need to provide one kilogram of cookies to every person, and we have six people total coming to this, what sounds like it's going to be an amazing party. So let's do the math on this, and let's figure out how many sig figs we should have in our answer. So of course, we can all multiply 1.00 times 6. We know that the answer is going to be 6 in terms of its magnitude. But what about sig figs? So let's look at our first number, the first non-zero digit which is one, is significant. And because we can see the decimal point in this number, all of the digits to the right of that are also significant. So that means that this number, 1.00 kilograms, has a total of three sig figs. And then what about the second number that we're working with, six people? Now, be careful because this might be, trick, this might be a trick to you. Um, this is not a measured number. This is a counted number. When we are determining how many people are coming to a party, we count them. We don't weigh them or put a ruler up to them. So because this is a counted number, we count people. This number has an infinite number of significant figures. So in comparing the significant figures in the numbers that we're multiplying, we have three versus infinity. Three is the smaller, which has the fewest number of significant figures. Three is the smaller of three versus infinity, which means that our answer gets expressed to three significant figures. Three significant figures in the answer because we are comparing three significant figures versus infinite significant figures. How can we take this number six and turn it into a three significant figure number? Like I said, we're just going to throw a decimal point on there and put a couple zeros on the end. So now it has one, two, three sig figs. And in terms of units for this number, the units are going to be weird. It's going to be kilograms times people. Now, I understand that this is definitely not enough examples. Two examples are not enough examples to really illustrate how to multiply and divide and get the right number of sig figs. But this is the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to be doing a lot of multiplying and dividing and doing some unit conversions. And in that video, we're gonna practice this concept over and over again. So if this is feeling kind of rusty to you, that's okay. Move on to the next video. You'll get a whole lot more practice.